Welcome everybody! Look at this cute and simple hat made entirely with scraps. Now why is it called the crochet chain tracks? We'll look a little closer. The chain lies between two tracks neatly encased for a rather tailored finished look. If you already know how to make a basic double crochet beanie, then you'll already have these skills like double crochet and finishing off and sewing in your ends and even how to properly size hats. If you don't know these skills, don't worry. I've provided links in the description box for the Bob Wilson 123 tutorials that taught me. In addition, we'll be changing colors, doing single crochet in the back loop only, and a single crochet camel stitch, but I'll demo these as I teach you this technique. You can make your hat any size, and you can use any yarn or hook size too. However, this stitch is easiest when done in the round because you can't turn your work and get the same results. If you choose to do it flat, you'll need to start each row from the same side so that all the right sides will be facing the same way. The back side isn't nearly as nice as the front. You'll start with a basic top-down double crochet beanie, but how do you know when to begin the chain track technique? Well, that's where the tutorial begins. So I'm making my hat for a child. So when I was constructing the hat, of course, I referred to a chart to make sure that I had my measurements correct. And now I need to know where to stop. Now I know it needs to be approximately, the hat height needs to be approximately seven and a half inches. So because I am doing a special trim, I need to stop before then, right? Now just so you'll have an understanding of the finished product, this is about, the finished trim is going to give you roughly an inch. It could give you more. I'm using worsted weight yarn, a 5.5 millimeter hook, which is an eye hook. It's given me about an inch. So it depends on your yarn, your tension, and everything. So, so I'll go ahead and stop where you have, I don't know, about an inch or an inch and a half more to go. And then begin this trim process. So let's measure. Okay, this is my favorite tape measure because I wrote on it and has my measurements on here that I need. All right, I'm starting it at this end and I'm measuring down. And so far I've completed a little over five and a half inches, not quite six. I happen to know from my little measurements on here that I need to stop around right here for a child's hat. That's what that dot tells me. So... As I lay it here, you can see I've allowed this much room to put this bottom part of the hat on. So I think I'm ready to go. Now one of the best things about this hat is it's going to allow us to use up our teeny tiny scraps. So what I did, you see this little loop? I went ahead and did a row with this and then ripped it all back out and marked it so that I would know how much we need so I could tell you. So if you're eyeballing it, <laughs> it's about that much, but I've got my tail set to ounces, and if I put just that much on there, it measures 0.1 ounce, or if we want to change it to grams, it's about 3 grams. Now there's one more way you could do, you could measure to see if you had enough, and that would be by inches, but since I don't know how much you need for each size hat, let me show you this trick. Naturally, an adult hat's going to be wider than, say, a baby hat. So you could figure out how much you need for your project by merely wrapping it around. So for a child's hat, seven times around gives me just the right amount. In theory, seven times around should work nicely for any size hat. Adult hats are larger, therefore each time around will be longer. Baby hats are smaller, therefore each time around will be shorter. I was careful to leave a bit extra for sewing in ends too, so I think that's a pretty good estimate. If you have an easy trick for this, please leave a note in the comment section. We love to learn new tips and tricks. So let's say I just finished my last row. I need to add in my new color. And I did that by merely chaining because I am going to do a single crochet row. So I really don't need any added height. Exactly. So what I'm going to do is a single crochet in the back loop only. So we're coming out of this stitch right here, so we're just going to go into the next stitch, pick up the back loop, and perform a single crochet. 
and continue that all the way around. Now what this is doing is creating a nice little frame for our chain stitch that's going to lie across the top. You see that right there? That's the little track that we're setting up. So go ahead and complete your row of single crochet back loop only and I'll meet you back. So here I am. I have one more stitch to do and I've played with this enough to know how I like to join this. So I'm going to share that with you. I've got one more stitch I want to put right here. And then I'm going to join by going under both of those. I'm not doing back loop only join. I'm going under both. I just like the way this worked out. And you slip stitch those together. I like the look of it better. Okay, so now we're going to move back. You can cut this if you want to because we're finished with this. Leaving enough to sew in. Or if you want to, you can crochet over it. But I'm not going to do that for the purpose of this tutorial. Okay, so what we're going to do now is chain one. Because my blue was still attached, so there's no attach attaching there. So chain one. And then I'm going to do camel stitch. Now, traditionally, camel stitch is done in a half double crochet, but we really want a short stitch so that this chain is going to lie very flat right here. We don't want it to, to raise up off the fabric in any way. So we did a single crochet. So it's going to be a little bit trickier. Here is your chain. Here is where we want to pick up as in a normal camel stitch. But you see your hook? That could help you pick it up if you're having trouble. So you can pull it out a little bit. And then stick there, that in there, and you're going to single crochet in that loop hiding in the back. See, there's the stitch, front loop, back loop, and the one in the back is the camel stitch loop. And now if you see it, if you can get this, go ahead and do it, but I'm, I'm finding it difficult without splitting yarn, so I'm using my hook to pick it up. You may be a looser crocheter than I am, and it may not give you any difficulties, but um, you still, whatever, whatever it takes. All right, now you can see what's happening. Do you see how we are forcing our crochet, crochet stitch? that would normally stand up like this, we're forcing it to lean over because we're picking up those loops on the back. So go ahead and complete this camel stitch all the way around and I'll meet you back. Okay, I am here at my last stitch. And again, I'm going to slip let me, let me tighten that a little bit. I am going to slip into this whole blue stitch. I'm going to catch both the loops. See? Both loops. And slip that together like that. Okay, so see what we have? There's the two tracks, but to complete this top track, our next row has to be back loop only. So I am going to chain two because I'm going to make this a double crochet row like the rest of my hat to finish it off. So I'm double crocheting all the way across back loop only. I'm sorry, I should say all the way around because I'm doing this in the round, aren't I? Okay, I've finished and I'm going to join with a slip stitch. Cut my yarn and sew it in. Now, let's see what we have. 
Okay, this of course would be the front. So you can see the the nice little chain with the edging on either side of it. So you just sew in your ends. See, that's pretty neat. There's only one little thing going right there, but when I tried to do it back loop only, it just didn't look as neat. So we have this one little join right there. But of course that's irrelevant. You can join any way you want to. That's the one I found most effective for me. So, great way to use up those tiny little bits of scraps.